November 3rd, 2002, Marib Province, Northern Yemen. A vehicle moves through the deserted area. There are seven people in it, including Abu Ali al-Harithi, a high-ranking member of al-Qaeda in Yemen. He is internationally wanted for orchestrating the 2000 attack on the USS Cole, which killed 17 American sailors, as well as for other assaults against US targets. But here in Yemen, al-Harithi feels safe. He does not know that he is being watched from the sky, right now. Just two kilometers away, a small MQ-1 Predator drone is tracking his vehicle. A split second later, the car is blown to pieces. The drone wasn't just observing, it was targeting, and it fired a Hellfire anti-tank missile. A direct hit. All six passengers, including Al-Harithi, were killed. This was a historic moment. For the first time in the world, a target was eliminated by a drone outside a conventional combat zone, controlled remotely from the other side of the planet. From that point on, drones would become the ultimate killing machines, not just for the US, but for the world. The MQ-1 Predator, a key player in Yemen that day, was originally designed as a surveillance aircraft. It was light, subsonic, easy to operate, and perfect for missions in regions with limited air defenses. But soon, the US military faced a dilemma. The Predator could deliver crystal clear video of a target, say, a suspected terrorist vehicle. But it couldn't act. The missiles or bombs were supposed to arrive with another carrier, and often they arrived too late. The solution was to turn the Predator into a strike platform. Installation of AGM-114 Hellfire anti-tank missiles, adaptation of the guidance system, and operator training. That's how the legendary Yemen operation became possible. Still, the Predator had clear limitations. It carried only two missiles, flew slowly, around 215 kilometers an hour, reached altitudes of just 7.5 kilometers, and depended heavily on good weather. It was vulnerable to man pads and ill-suited for more complex strike missions, offering limited flexibility to commanders. Therefore, in 2003, General Atomics launched development of a new Predator B, later renamed to MQ-9 Reaper. It was designed to be faster, stronger, and more versatile. And it delivered. The MQ-9 Reaper turned drone warfare from a concept into a cornerstone of modern military strategy. It became indispensable for counterterrorism, surveillance, and precision strikes, laying the technological foundation for today's era of drone dominance. The Reaper's first flight was in 2005. In 2006, it entered service with the US Air Force, and in 2007, it flew its first combat mission in Afghanistan. It didn't replace the Predator overnight. By 2018, however, the MQ-1 had been fully retired and the Reaper took its place, not as an observer, but as a strike platform with reconnaissance capabilities, rather than the other way around. November 12th, 2015, near Raqqa, Syria. The target, Mohammed Mwazi, known as Jihadi John, a British national who became a symbol of ISIS brutality. He was known for several propaganda execution videos in which he personally beheaded Western hostages. The MQ-9 tracked him for hours. Its endurance allowed it to watch, confirm his identity, study his surroundings. With upgraded optics, infrared cameras, laser and GPS targeting, it operated in fog, at night, in dense urban terrain. It waited, slow and lethal, like a true predator. It was still armed with the same AGM-114 Hellfire missiles, but this time, four of them. Eventually, Jihadi John got into a car. The MQ-9 continued tracking him. It could accelerate to 400 kilometers an hour and fly over 1,800 kilometers without refueling. But no superhero maneuvers were necessary. Just one missile was enough. Boom, the terrorist was eliminated. Not a single civilian was harmed. Years earlier, the MQ-9 had already been actively used in Iraq and Afghanistan to strike targets using Hellfire missiles and 500-pound bombs. And it was the pinpoint elimination of top terrorists that made it legendary. 
January 3rd, 2020, Baghdad. Two American drones launched missiles at a convoy of two vehicles leaving the airport. Among those killed was Qasem Soleimani, commander of Iran's Quds Force, an elite unit of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. He was known as the Grey Cardinal of the Shia Crescent, a central architect of Iran's axis of influence stretching from Tehran to Beirut. The strike stunned even military analysts. How had they tracked down a man so obsessed with his own security? In addition, the nearest drone airbase is in Kuwait, which is 570 kilometers from the target. All signs pointed to only one UAV capable of carrying it out, and this was later officially confirmed. It was again the MQ-9 Reaper. And this is where the Reaper truly changed the nature of war. It became a drone capable not only of delivering strikes, but of choosing how to apply pressure. On its seven hardpoints it can carry, the same AGM-114 Hellfires, missiles for high-precision elimination of vehicles, buildings, and groups of people. GBU-12 Paveway 2, laser-guided bombs, GBU-38 JDAM, GPS-guided munitions, GBU-49 Enhanced Paveway 2, with dual guidance, GPS plus laser. Its max payload is 1,700 kilograms, making it a fully-fledged combat platform. The Reaper is remotely piloted via the Ku-band satellite system. The operator may be in Nevada while the drone operates over the Sahara. Communication uses dual-channel redundancy to present loss of contact. If the signal is lost, the MQ-9 can follow a pre-programmed scenario, return to base, or loiter over his own. The Reaper is an excellent partner in large-scale operations. It often works in tandem with ground special forces units, who provide coordinates and target markers. It coordinates with manned aircraft like the F-15E or AC-130. And it often flies with other Reapers, not as the lone hunter, but as part of a swarm. Yes. But how does it stay invisible? It's not exactly small. Its wingspan is about 20 meters, bigger than an F-16. This isn't for maneuvering, but for aerodynamic efficiency. It needs to stay aloft for days. The fuselage is extremely simple, no angles, smooth surfaces. There's no stealth geometry. The Reaper doesn't hide. It simply flies higher than anything else. Its ceiling is up to 15 kilometers, 50,000 feet. Most short-range air defense systems simply can't reach it. Its engine, the Honeywell TPE 331 10GD turboprop, generates around 900 horsepower, 671 kilowatts. Originally designed for manned aircraft, it was successfully adapted for the MQ-9. Powerful, reliable, and fuel-efficient enough to support long-endurance missions. This engine is what lets the Reaper shadow a target for hours without tiring. And of course, the Reaper is not just a killer, it's a superb scout. If drones were awarded medals, this one would have earned one for its stunning performance in Mexico. For several years, the Department of Homeland Security and the CIA assisted Mexican forces in hunting down cartel leaders. During those operations, unarmed MQ-9 Reapers conducted surveillance. The top target, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. He had escaped from prison in 2001 and successfully evaded capture for over a decade. The drones monitored Guzman's cartel from its drug labs. And here is the result. In 2014, Guzman was arrested at a beach resort hotel in Mazlatan, Sinaloa. Later, in 2023, the Reaper helped track down his son, another major drug trafficker. According to the Wall Street Journal, the drone program in Mexico had been running for over two decades. It's no surprise that for America's enemies, shooting down an MQ-9 Reaper is a true victory, proudly reported by the media. Yes, it can be shot down by medium or long-range air defense systems or fighter aircraft. But this drone isn't helpless. If properly managed, it detects threats long before they can reach it and can evade most attacks. Of course, the MQ-9 Reaper is a high-value target. Each unit costs around 30 to 40 million dollars. But the US is believed to have nearly 300 Reapers in service. 
what's more, the MQ-9 is exported, albeit in limited numbers and under strict US controls. In addition, in 2023, no fewer than six MQ-9 Reapers were spotted over the skies of Gaza. No, Israel hasn't officially adopted them. After all, it's a world leader in drone development. So what were the American UAVs doing there? They were searching for hostages kidnapped by terrorists. The Reaper's camera system is a multifunctional reconnaissance module that can be configured for specific missions. Its main sensor module is the Raytheon MTSB. It includes FLIR thermal imaging, which detects heat signatures from people, engines, fires, or underground ventilation shafts. Its daytime camera has an ultra-powerful zoom with high-resolution color imagery. Its infrared sensor works in low light or total darkness. It features auto-stabilization and target tracking. All of this is packed into a rotating turret mounted beneath the Reaper's nose. Additional modules can intercept signals, radio, mobile, or spoken communications. Synthetic Aperture Radar SAR, allows it to see through clouds, smoke, and even ground. GMTI mode tracks moving targets, vehicles, or people, and is mounted as a separate pod under the fuselage. The MQ-9 Reaper is a unique scout and killer. It has changed the very nature of warfare. Picture this. An operator sits in an air-conditioned trailer at Creech Air Force Base in Nevada, sipping coffee from a plastic cup, controlling an aircraft flying over Yemen or Afghanistan with a joystick. In the next room is a CIA analyst, and another, an imagery specialist, all of them in civilian clothes, all of them on their shifts, all of them going home after work. This mode of warfare breaks the traditional structure of risk. Pilots no longer risk their lives. A commander can eliminate a target without sounding alarms or mobilizing troops. But this raises a critical question. Where does warfare end and execution begin? The United States officially acknowledges the use of the MQ-9 in counterterrorism operations, but not all missions are disclosed. Many are conducted under intelligence operations, classified and off the books. Those targeted are not only armed militants, but also suspects involved in coordination, communications, and logistics. Terms like signature strike have emerged when a person is killed not by name, but by behavioral profile. A military-aged male, traveling with armed individuals, frequently visiting a known location. This has drawn heavy criticism. Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, and other rights organizations have accused the U.S. of replacing due process with operations based on police-style profiling and visual analysis. Mistakes have happened. Civilians have died, including children. A 2015 leak revealed that up to 90% of those killed in some operations were not the intended targets. They simply happened to be nearby. The fate of the drone operators themselves is another matter. Though they aren't physically in hostile territory, rates of burnout, PTSD, and guilt are high. They aren't pilots in the traditional sense, but they watch, in real time, the face of the person they are about to eliminate. They see him step out of his car, sip his tea, and then they press the button. The MQ-9 has made war one-sided, but at the same time, it has made it deeply personal for those who wage it. This is not a war of machines. It is a war without risk for one side and without chance for the other. The ethical question remains unsolved, but one thing is clear. No one is going to give up drone warfare. Meanwhile, the US is developing an even more advanced drone, one with greater survivability and longer endurance. It's called MQ Next. Few details are known, but one thing is certain. It will not just be a missile carrier, but a node in a distributed combat network. One of the key priorities for General Atomic's aeronautical systems, the developer, is reduced detectability. The new drone will feature a low radar, heat, and noise signature. Its design includes a hybrid electric engine, exhaust diffusion systems, radar-absorbing materials, and an aerodynamic shape that reduces its radar cross-section. The second key feature, modular architecture. The 
MQ Next will be capable of executing different mission types, from reconnaissance and surveillance to electronic warfare and precision strikes, thanks to interchangeable payload modules. This will allow rapid adaptation to specific missions without a full system overhaul. The third essential trait, autonomy. The drone will be equipped with AI systems, sensor data fusion algorithms, automated target classification, and route planning in low communication environments. This will enable missions in complex operational conditions, including contested airspace with active air defenses. A continuous upgrade model is also planned. Instead of buying complete systems every 10 to 15 years, MQ Next will follow an open architecture approach. Upgrades to sensors, engines, and software will be rolled out as soon as they are ready, without delays tied to full redesigns. According to the developer, MQ Next will retain all of the Reaper's functionality, while surpassing it in survivability, versatility, and scalability. In an era of growing threats from near peer adversaries like China, these qualities are critical. And although it may seem that the MQ-9 Reaper is fading into the past, it's too early to write it off. It remains a textbook example, one that is constantly being copied. China, for instance, has developed the Wing Long 2 and CH-4 drones, which closely mirror the MQ-9 in both appearance and function. These are sold to dozens of countries, from Saudi Arabia to Algeria. Iran is reproducing similar drones through reverse engineering, disassembling captured units. Houthi rebels in Yemen and proxy groups across the Middle East do the same. In other words, the Reaper's architecture lives on even where it was never sold. What's next? It's likely that the Reaper will remain in reserve, used in secondary conflicts, as a strike workhorse in Africa operations or the Middle East. But the core missions of the future, penetration, air defense suppression, swarm command, will fall to newer machines. The Reaper will remain a teacher, a prologue, and proof that a drone is no longer just a scout, it is a tool of power.